Okay, so um, we continue. The next talk is about a project uh, that's now called Airprobe that had a number of different names before, one of them, among them GSM Scanner. The, the goal of Airprobe is to provide a set of tools that enables you with the USAP or GNU Radio hardware component um, to sniff GSM of the air, decode the protocol, uh, make measurements, and basically be in general purpose development tool for everything GSM over the air. Okay, hello. Is this working? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'll probably wait for a couple of more seconds until, you know, people have settled on their seats. Um, for those of you who have been attending the last talk, I now have some statistics here on, on, on the screen. Um, I'm just going to finish that before going on with the, the actual other topic. Um, so this is uh, the, the number of, so connect request, um, well, no, we'll rather start with the green one. Set up indication, this is the number of calls that people have tried to make over the time. So you can see up to here, uh, basically, we were still doing build-up, build-up testing and so on. And, and, and on the 13th of uh, um, August, at around uh, 2 p.m., we started to make the network public. And people were actually using it and starting to make calls. So this is the number of calls that people were trying to make. Um, the red line is the number of calls where the recipient was actually available. So the recipient you know, could have switched off his phone or could have been you know, switched back to his uh, commercial DSM network and so on. And then the blue line is how many people actually picked up their phone. So you, you see there's, uh, well, many people have decided to leave the network and are not reachable anymore. And uh, then even out of those people, uh, a high percentage is not actually picking up the phone. Um, this is the kind of statistics you can, you can draw, and we, we continue this and, and see. But also what you can see is, well, at least until uh, about 24 hours ago, um, you know, the number of subscribers was already above 400, um, but not, not, even, not even every single subscriber ever made a voice call. So please use the network more. Make more phone calls, send more SMS. Um, you know, we really want to have more load on this network. OK, we also have what was missing from the last talk, and I'm sorry for the delay. Um, where are we? Here. We also have this uh, you know, relationship diagram, who sends SMS to whom. The numbers here, this is, uh, not, this is anonymized. So these are not the phone numbers in this diagram. This is uh, just anonymized, so you can see, but you can very clearly see that they're always like networks. So like these four people apparently know each other, so they've sent a couple of messages back and forth. Well, actually quite a few, 13, 20, something like that. And then there is this big blob here. Well, three is me, I can say that. Um, obviously, you know, I did a lot of testing with a lot of kinds of people and, and sending test messages back and forth. And you can see, well, it, it extends to down here and but then typically it's like two, one, well six is already quite high number of messages. And then here you have all of these islands. So again, you know, a couple of people who know each other, a couple of people again, maybe only two. Those two have actually sent 24 messages, quite chatty. 41 here. No, it's four this way. The, ah, sorry, yeah. Uh, so this is two and one, two and four, messages. it's not that many actually. Um, but here, tw what is this, 23, 2, and 1. So 23 is definitely a high number. But it continues all the way, and you see all kinds of islands. So apparently not many people know each other or communicate each other. It's all only within a small group, but not you know, with many other people. Yeah, well, so use more SMS messages. And, and I mean, you know, it's free. It's free. You can send more messages. <laughs> So maybe you might want to send random messages to random people and say, you know, who, who are you? <laughs> you know, it's free. 
OK. Now, different topic. Yeah, well, um, you know, yeah, whatever you want to say. Um, yeah, Air Probe. So this presentation is about a project called Air Probe. Um, and it's about monitoring GSM traffic with uh, hardware just uh, like the universal software radio peripheral. I'm going to talk all through this uh, in, in a couple of minutes. Um, so again, the question why? You know, why would you want to monitor GSM traffic? Well, because you can, obviously. Um, because the protocol is not you know, designed in a way that entirely prevents you from doing that. Um, also, for the same reason that you might monitor other networks, to learn and experiment with technology, and uh, well, also to do things that uh, people haven't been doing all that much so far. You know, war driving with Wi-Fi cards, you know, it's old. Um, you know, finding whatever open Wi-Fi networks, breaking WAP keys, you know, must be, must be getting boring for these kids uh, at some point. So that, you know, there's other, other networks that are publicly deployed and that have massive security problems. Um, you know, DECT is one of them, and you have seen uh, at uh, last year's CCC Congress uh, what has happened to DECT security after a couple of people have looked at it in more detail. Probably the first couple of people in whatever, 10, 15 years. Um, and for GSM networks, it's also the same. These networks are deployed, and you know, the industry is very closed. Um, they don't really um, get much input from the general IT security community, and uh, they especially apparently don't like to improve their security. So um, by monitoring GSM traffic, you can uh, be basically, again, one step closer to demonstrating, to actually practically demonstrating the known GSM security problems. Um, and that, again, can help you to raise public awareness, just like uh, operating your own network is one of the tools, one of the foundations that you need or that can help you to raise uh, 